Hi there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at our new box of Star Wars Legion Stormtroopers. Um, it's unit expansion for the game uh, and I'm actually pretty darn uh, pretty darn stoked. Now uh, I've got a little bit of the uh, wrapper on here. Just wanted to show that it's uh, kind of unopened and untouched. So uh, I'm going to be pulling the cellophane off of this just because of the reflection and we'll be right back. All right, so we've got the cellophane off. Now we can actually take a look at the box here. We've got, uh, obviously, Star Wars Legion, uh, the big logo at the top. Uh, we've got the Imperial symbol, and, of course, we're talking about the Stormtroopers uh, unit expansion. Uh, nice, you know, healthy chunk of artwork on there. Great as a painting guide, you name it. So um, looking at the box itself, we've got... Uh, you know, kind of the, the, the text on the back here. Uh, an entire legion of my best troops awaits them. Emperor Palpatine. You notice how I had to read Emperor Palpatine in order to get the voice in, right? Um, These soldiers of the Galactic Empire are the backbone of the Imperial War Machine. Ruthless and disciplined in combat, stormtroopers are merciless and efficient, but not at shooting things, in carrying out their orders. Though... Uh, though considered expendable by the Empire, they are nonetheless feared throughout the galaxy. This expansion for the Star Wars Legion contains seven finely sculpted Stormtrooper miniatures, enough for one core unit, along with a new unit and upgrade cards to field in battle. And of course we've got a little picture of the, uh, of the Stormtroopers in the back there, like in the leader guy with the, the kind of extended uh, pauldron or, or, or kind of command piece there. And then you've got the seven plastic miniatures. Nice, pretty cool. This pack contains everything you need to add one trooper, stormtrooper unit to your army. Uh, this box contains unpainted miniatures, good thing for us, and we'll be assembling them as well. Sweet. So let's um, let's get this box opened here. Yeah, it's it's such a cool thing to see what's going to be going on with this Legion game. I'm, I'm not quite sure, again, what my total buy-in is of this, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to paint a couple of these up, play a couple games. Maybe we'll do a, a scenario or two and just kind of see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see here that we've got our uh, instruction manual and we've got our um, cards for all of our unit stuff. Oh, there's the cards and we've got the tokens, all of that. We've got our instruction manual. Look at those in a sec. And we've also got, if I pull them out, all of our troopers here. All right, let's put the box off to the side. Okay, so let's uh, move the troopers to the side uh, just for a second, and let's take a look at our our card here. So this is our uh, Stormtroopers unit expansion. It talks about uh, all the different Stormtroopers we have. DLT-19 Stormtrooper, uh, Stormtrooper unit leader, regular stormtrooper, the HH-12 stormtrooper, so the anti-tank guy, uh, additional stormtroopers all the way through. So uh, fairly basic. They got the one heavy weapons upgrade, which is cool. And we've got the uh, DLT-19 as well. Sweet. Um, <laughs> to assemble the miniatures, follow the steps. Sort the parts. Uh, assemble each miniature using the correct parts as shown and allow any glue used during assembly to dry. Nice. Very well done. Good instructions. And then it has our whole component list in there as well. All right, so taking a look at the tokens, uh, you can see that we have our Imperial token over here. Uh, we've got all the different uh, gameplay mechanic icons that come along with it, and they are double-sided, which is always, always nice. Uh, we've also got the Stormtrooper, uh, Stormtrooper's card here. Uh, let's look at the uh, fluff part first. So, uh, Stormtroopers. While armored Stormtroopers were a ubiquitous sight across the galaxy, striking fear into the hearts of those who would oppose the Empire, though their tactics could be rigid, these fanatically loyal troops often overwhelm their foes through sheer weight of numbers. Um, and again, very much like the Imperial Guard, just kind of scrambling uh, across, uh, you know, just by sheer numbers, the Empire would just swarm you know, all these small little outposts and villages and uh, even, you know, small enemy ships, things like that. Uh, only in these Imperial Stormtroopers could be so precise. Uh, so when you spend an aim token, you get to reroll up to one additional die, which is great. It doesn't change the amount that they shoot, it just changes how accurate they are. Again, pretty cool. You got the slots for all the upgrades, the points that go along with, and uh, generally all the stats you need for the game, movement, etc. Very sweet, unarmed versus armed with the E11 blaster rifle. Sweet! Yeah, liking it a lot. Really, really cool. Okay, next up we'll take a look at the cards. 
uh, we'll see that we've got, again, just like uh, Armada X-Wing, all the other Fantasy Flight games, you'll see that you've got all the different uh, abilities and those you can buy. They've got the points cost down the side, which is cool. Um, Stormtrooper, add one Stormtrooper Mini, so you can expand out, uh, uh, expand out, have an oversized squad, which is, which is awesome. Um, DLT-19 Stormtrooper. Uh, so this is their kind of their long, long rifle impact. While well, attacking unit has armor, change up to one uh, result to a another result. So very, very cool. Uh, HH-12, and again, this is the big anti-tank guy. Uh, add one mini to the squad. It's cumbersome. Can you use this weapon and move? Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can't be like rolling anti-tank. It's got the dice stats and all that. Impact 3. Uh, and again, anything against armor. Awesome. Uh, impact grenades and grappling hooks. We saw these with the uh, Rebel Troopers. And uh, they can either uh, gain Expert Climber and move over terrain awesomely. Or impact one that make them you know, somewhat anti-armor. Anti so, uh, lots of cards that kind of come along with the unit. We've also got our Troopers, of course. And um, I love, again, the fact that they're all individually uh, wrapped. Uh, they're not on sprue, so there's not a lot of flash that you have to take off or clipping that you have to do. It's a nice, fast way to get started. So pulling these guys out of the package, uh, right away I can see that uh, there's not a lot of flash on these guys. Uh, I'm actually really liking the fact that they didn't come on sprues. Uh, it sure definitely uh, reduces that assembly time uh, down quite significantly, which is nice. Um, we'll see that the bases here are that same thick... Um, you know, kind of thick plastic uh, that we had for the Rebel guys. Uh, however, um, they've got a nice kind of gray to them. So if you're just doing a quick and dirty kind of assembly and you haven't decided to paint them yet, they'll still look a little different on the table as a different team as opposed to using the, the same bases. Uh, a little bit of flash here on the base, but not too, uh, not too bad. Nothing really to complain about there. And the models, again, doesn't look like I'm going to be needing to do a lot of... Uh, uh, mold line removal. So uh, the next step for me here uh, is I'm going to go over each of the individual models, but um, I'll assemble things up first, and then we'll come back and revisit the assembled models, and we'll work our way through the uh, through the group. Okay, we've got our seven troopers all assembled up here, and uh, again, just like the rebel troops, really high quality casts. Um, very little in the way of mold lines. Uh, next to zero trimming uh, needed to be done. We're not pulling off of sprues. Awesome. Again, the plastic uh, is is a great plastic. There's some flexibility to it, but it's still still a fairly uh, rigid plastic. I think on your um, on your big honking huge rifle here, which is the the DLT19. Um, I think that guy, uh, you know, he was a little bit bent. So with a bit of care, I kind of bent him back. Um, hopefully, we don't have to hot water bend that, but uh, it is a concern. Just wanted to to make an observation of that. But it, you know, it's fine. Um, and really liking the way the kits went together. Obviously, they had those uh, the slots in the arms. Um, so kind of like a specific key uh, pose for these. So uh, they couldn't go together any other way. I used the uh, Plastruck plastic weld uh, for all of the joins and it seemed to work just fine. Uh, any kind of polystyrene glue would be great, but uh, that's the one that I would recommend. And you know, the poses are actually quite, uh, quite good. So let's take a look at all of our uh, all of our troopers here one by one, and we'll look at the leader first off. He's got his blaster in there. You know, he's kind of uh, walking around with a little bit of gravitas, and he's got that you know hand. Uh, he's not necessarily pointing. He's kind of urging the guys forward, which is fairly decent. I like the fact that even though the blaster is out, um, he's got a holster here for a pistol, and he's got you know the standard stormtrooper kind of trappings at the back. Uh, you'll also see that he's got that kind of command uh, flare or pauldron or what have you. And so that there is, you know, de definitely going to make him stand out. And we'll probably choose a bright color uh, to go with that so that we can actually see him uh, separate from all the rest of the crew. Looking at the four troopers now, you'll see that they've actually done a great job of splitting up the poses. They've got the raised arm firing, the kind of the, the hip shooting uh, off to the right. Uh, or sorry, his left, uh, and you got the shooting off to his right as well while they're walking. So uh, they're not very static in terms of, uh, you know, they could be very, very static. Uh, but I like the fact that they've added lots of, uh, of kind of 
you know, kind of dynamic posturing to them. Uh, you can see this guy is kind of, you know, rushing off to catch up with the rest of the team or, you know, kind of get to cover that type of thing. So uh, I'm very happy with the posing. You'll see the heads are kind of alternately posed left and uh, so, um, you know, kind of left and right. So they're actually looking in the different directions, which again, I'm always a huge fan of seeing and I try and do with all of my multi-part kits. So really digging the fact that they broke up the poses and that's just for the standard troopers, which is, which is awesome. Next up, we have the two heavy weapons guys, and uh, I really like the DLT-19. Here, this guy, uh, you know, it's like that kind of heavy weapon system, and, you know, it's got some big kind of anti-armor punching power, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you can see that he's got a little bit of a different backpack here. He's got a little more gear on him just to kind of bulk him out a little bit more. He still has his blaster sitting in the holster on his hip. And, you know, just in general, it's, it's nice to see uh, that, you know, he's still got lots and lots of kit as the heavy weapon guys. You know, they tend to look kind of loaded down, which is, which is really good. Now, the knee joint, again, this happens with a kind of a single cast. Uh, the knee joint here, uh, you know, is, is a little kind of melded together, unfortunately. Now, we will be solving that with, uh, with our, our pens as we kind of paint this. But um, just to show you here that it's not all perfect. Now, the other legs and, and all that are, are quite nice. I also like the way that they've got these seams and they'll really pick up any kind of wash or, or, or penning or black lining that we do. So with the heavy weapons guy, yeah, he's really bulked out, really digging him. And then finally, our HH-12 Stormtrooper here with the, with the missile launcher. Nice kind of cool dynamic pose as they drop down and start, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, getting ready to fire here. Uh, he's looking through his range finder trying to, to look ahead. Uh, you can see the way the knee join works there with that little bit of a, that kind of embellishment of those, those studs or those uh, raised elements that are in there. He also has his blaster in there. And I'm really digging the fact that there's, like, again, there's not very many mold lines. And I do see one, and it's, whoops, I do see one, and it's right on his foot right here. Uh, so I'll have to trim that down. But I want to show you and say, look, there is very little in the way of mold lines on these guys. So before I give kind of final thoughts here, I just wanted to do, and I did it with the Rebels, a size comparison with something that we might be used to uh, in in other ranges. And of course, I'm going to use my handy dandy Primaris Marine. He's kind of the closest uh, scale to them. Instead of it being a 28 mil, it's more of a 32 mil uh, figure. And uh, grabbing the, the, the measuring tape out, it is ex almost exactly 32 mil, which is which is pretty cool. Um, it's a nice scale. It's a truer kind of um, kind of head is one sixth of the body uh, type scale. So not necessarily heroic scale. Definitely looking like the guys out of the movie. And yeah, I think it works out really, really well for this this type of game for sure. Now, um, like the Rebels, I will give these guys a big thumbs up. I like the plastic. Uh, I think it's got lots of flex to it, but it's still uh, firm enough that it won't bend too much. Uh, our, our big heavy weapon trooper here, uh, the DLT-19, uh, okay, so our big DLT-19 here, uh, there was a little bit of a bend in the, the barrel, but uh, not too not too bad, um, just kind of a quick straightening out and everything's good, but the, the everything fit together really nice, the kits went together really, really well, and I'm also really liking the fact that there's all these dynamic poses in here, and uh, again, very, very nice kit. And I think if you bought the kit, I think it would just, you know, it's it, all the diversity of poses, all that. Uh, you could buy one or two of them and you wouldn't be too far off in terms of, uh, in terms of kind of, uh, you know, diversity and all that. So, uh, big thumbs up. Uh, really dig the models themselves and I uh, can't wait to get them painted. Now, painting video is soon on the heels of this one here, but I thought I'd get the reviews of both the Rebel and the Stormtrooper kits out first, uh, and then we'll move into our paint scheme. Now, there's lots of conversations about how to paint these guys. Do you want them grimy? Do you want them shiny? And I usually go for grimy, uh, but I'm going to try and get kind of a nice clean looking armor with little bits of grime kind of caught in there. So just fresh to the battlefield is I think what I'm, I'm going to be going for. But I'll discuss that in the other video. If you like this video, uh, obviously hit that like button. It helps get the video out there. It helps get the channel out there. Uh, and it really helps a ton uh, with the analytics and all that. So please jab that like button. It's, it's fantastic. 
fantastic. And feel free, if you haven't already, to hit that subscribe button. Uh, there's uh, lots of kind of, uh, you know, painting of models and miniature games, and we're going to be moving more towards some of the, uh, you know, just kind of live games as we, as we go through as well. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This was a ton of fun to put together. I hope it was of value, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you